All right, folks, so here it is. So this is the new 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and this is definitely pretty exciting. So my M1 Max MacBook Pro is still in the mail, but I thought I'd go ahead and pick up this one as well, just because I wanted to check out what the 14 inch version is all about, as well as do some back-to-back -back comparisons between a completely specced out M1 Max MacBook Pro versus one of their more base level M1 Pro MacBook Pros. I'm gonna be saying Pro like 800 times in this video. So I did choose to get the absolute base level 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro for quite a few reasons. So first First of all, the base level comes with a half terabyte of storage where I think one terabyte is a little bit more appropriate for content creators in this day and age where file sizes can get really large. And storage is definitely important, but the other differences between the base model and the next level up is that this version comes with a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU versus the base model, which has an eight core CPU and a 14 core GPU. But not only that, the base model comes with a 67 watt power adapter where this one comes with a 96 watt, I believe, power adapter to drive those more powerful internals but both of the base configurations of both of these versions come with 16 gigabytes of memory, so we're gonna have to see if that's gonna be sufficient. Overhead camera on, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Oh boy, love doing that. Ooh, there it is, all right. So lift up the computer itself. We have some manuals. We have the 96 watt power brick. We have the new USB-C to MagSafe power cable, and that's everything in the box. All right, so for manuals, they basically just have a little quick start guide right here. Safety precautions, very important. And then some black Apple stickers. So at least on this 14 inch model, this new power brick, it doesn't come with the extension cable like we've gotten on some previous MacBook Pros, but this piece still does come out. So you can still utilize one of those cables if you have one of those laying around. This power cable, I'm not sure if you can see from there, it's actually a braided power cable. So that's actually really nice. And let's go ahead and unwrap this guy. Here. So this is the space gray version, and that is pretty darn sexy, of course. There's gonna be our ports, goodness. So we have our MagSafe, we have our two USB-C, which are going to also be Thunderbolt 4 headphone microphone jack. So on this side, we have HDMI, we have another USB-C, as well as the Hallelujah SD card slot. All right, so let's go ahead and get this rolling. Nice little piece of felt on the cover. That iconic sound. Hello. Okay, so as you can see, the notch right here even in dark mode, just because it does have a transparent bar up top, you definitely notice the notch. So I think what we should do is actually check out how this display looks while viewing videos, as well as hear the speakers. Boom, look at that. There's my buddy Ray, and there's me. I'm gonna have to choose my video, probably, definitely. How's it going, folks? I'm Des with Desfit, and this is the Apple Watch Series 7 Watch. These speakers are phenomenal. Oh my gosh. I kind of can't believe this, actually. Hold on. Let's keep on going. It's the Series 6 with a slightly larger case, a larger display, a more durable build as well. I'm kind of blown away. I mean, the speakers on my Core i9 MacBook Pro were really, really good, but I can't believe what they're pulling off with this smaller 14-inch version. I'm super impressed. And then for the actual display, holy cow, that's, it's kind of hard to explain, but this is really a nice looking display. So now I'm gonna go ahead and load up Adobe Creative Suite on this guy and do the same render test just to see what kind of differences there's gonna be between a Core i9 MacBook Pro, a Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio that's running a Core i7 processor and this new M1 Pro 14 inch. So we'll see you in just a bit. Okay, so we're back after some initial tests and there's definitely some interesting results here. So I wanted to go ahead and initially test Premiere Pro first just because that's where I spend the majority of my time with both editing as well as rendering. So rendering times are definitely important, especially if we're in a rush to get a video out. But if you're editing workflow as fast where you don't have to create proxies, scrubbing throughout the timelines nice and smooth, as well as applying effects like warp stabilizer, don't bring your machine to a halt, those could make a bigger difference in the whole scheme of things when producing a video. And these were just some initial tests using a completed project, but I'm gonna have a follow-up video where I'll be doing a lot more tests like throwing some 5K drone footage at it, which usually brings my current machine to a halt, as well as some 5K GoPro footage and a whole bunch of other tests. But let me know in the comments section down below if there's anything specific that you'd like me to test for that follow-up video. 
So anyhow, onto these tests. So just to give you an idea of what this project is all about, it's the completed project for my Apple Watch Series 7 in-depth review. And this is about a medium-sized project for me with the completed timeline being about 11 minutes long. The A roll consists of ProRes 422 footage and there's no color correction on those. And then the B roll consists of 4K 60 footage from my iPhone 13 Pro, as well as some 422 10-bit footage out of my Sony A7S III. Oh, and then with all the machines, I made sure that all of them were running the most up-to-date versions of Premiere Pro as well as Media Encoder. And I turned off pretty much all the other applications just to create as even a playing ground as possible. Okay, so let's first start out with scrubbing. So these are gonna be the files straight out of the cameras and I didn't create any proxies for these files. So with the Core i9 MacBook Pro, it does an okay job. It refreshes the program monitor fairly quickly when moving throughout the timeline and playback generally happens pretty instantaneously. Where I see this machine struggle is with screen recordings where it takes a couple seconds to refresh the program monitor and playback takes a few moments to happen. And that was at half playback resolution and with full playback resolution, it's still pretty good, but a little bit slower. And then with the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, scrubbing was, I would say, not bad, but you can sort of see some choppiness in the program monitor. It's nothing that I would say would slow down my workflow, but it's just not completely smooth playback. And that was with both half playback resolution as well as full playback resolution. But what I found kind of interesting on this machine was that the screen recordings refresh rather quickly and they also play back nearly instantaneously where those clips on my i9 MacBook Pro were quite a bit slower. And then on the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it did quite a good job with scrubbing overall. It refreshed the preview quickly on pretty much all the clips and scrubbing was pretty smooth for the most part. There was a little bit of a delay with the screen recordings just like the i9 MacBook Pro, but it was definitely a lot faster refreshing the preview. And that was with playback and half resolution. And what was nice to see is I didn't necessarily see it slow down that much for full resolution playback. So for scrubbing and editing, I'd say that all these machines do a pretty decent job for the most part, but I'd probably have to give a slight edge to the M1 Pro. However, with rendering times, this is a little bit of a different story. So let's start out with a baseline with my good old Core i9 MacBook Pro and the output settings will be the same for all of these where I'm outputting an H.264 using the YouTube 4K output preset and all of these machines are plugged into power. So for the i9 MacBook Pro, it took nine minutes and five seconds to render out that 11 minute clip, less than a one to one ratio. So that's pretty respectable. Now, one thing I do wanna note here is I did test out rendering that project with a previous version of Premiere Pro with the i9 MacBook Pro, and that render took 11 minutes and 26 seconds. So there's definitely been some optimizations made recently with Premiere Pro. So make sure to download the latest version to get the best performance. And then for the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, it took eight minutes and 36 seconds to render out that same clip. Getting better for sure. And what's interesting here is that there isn't a huge difference between this Windows machine and the Intel-based MacBook Pro. And again, I think Adobe's done some substantial optimizations in their latest release. But now let's check out this 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and it was able to render that clip in, wait for it, just six minutes and 32 seconds, which kind of blew my mind being that much faster than those other machines, especially considering the fact that this is one of their more base level configurations. So in terms of the hype, well, I think the hype is pretty real here, folks. And again, this is one of the more base level configurations of the M1 Pro. The differences, especially when it comes to rendering times are pretty substantial. So it's gonna be interesting to see how much of a difference there's gonna be between this model and a completely spec'd out M1 Max MacBook Pro that costs nearly $2,000 more and whether that's worth it or not. Anyhow, if you like the video, if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos just like this, including a comparison to the M1 Max MacBook Pro, which I'm just trying to be really patient about as it's in the mail. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.